know the Northlanders like to play with fire. So do I. Not the first town I've seen in this state. Don't get easier. Don't ever get easier. Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Milk and Cookies Total War. I am Indy Pride, and it is happening. Vermintide 2 is on the way, and there was a gigantic info dump of gameplay and information, so let's jump right into it. Again, for those of you who don't know, Vermintide is a first-person co-op game with a melee focus and some FPS elements set in the Warhammer Fantasy Battle universe. Quite a bit like Left 4 Dead, but instead of sprinting zombies, you have hordes of the beady-eyed ratmen known as Skaven, and an even more sinister enemy, coming to join the pack. So at the end of Vermintide Stromdorf DLC, Clan Fester, the Skaven clan that you're fighting the entire game, forged a pact with some unknown entity, and the nature of that pact has at least partially been revealed now. The devotees of Nurgle, the marauders and warriors of chaos blessed by the Poxfather, are coming to Vermintide to get hype. The Skaven and the forces of chaos have teamed up, and they're moving on Helmgart, a fortress town in the Grey Mountains that guards the border between Bretonia and the Empire. It is a direct sequel to Game 1, and all five of the characters will be returning, so that means Kirillian the Waywatcher, Bard in the Ranger, Kruber the Empire Soldier, Saltspire the Witch Hunter, and Sienna the Bright Wizard will all be playable. The Warriors of Chaos have a massive amount of HP, high armor that typically can't be penetrated by normal attacks, and are a lot stronger than Storm Vermin. Sword and Board Storm Vermin are also confirmed to be in the game, and there's a Chaos Spawn mini-boss similar to the Rat Ogre that can pick up friendlies and use them as a weapon, or chew on allies to regain some of its health back. Storm Fiends are also confirmed, a mutated Rat Ogre with heavy armor and dual-wielding warp fire throwers that surgically replaced its hands, and the devs have stated that there are roughly three times the amount of enemies in the sequel when compared to the first game. In one of the screenshots you'll see here in a second, we even get a good look at what look like Chaos Trolls, which are these mutated river beasts that look pretty damn terrifying, and I imagine they're going to be very tough to bring down as well. This time, each character will have three different career paths they can follow, for a total of 15 different careers. Each career has its own playstyle and bonuses, coming with one passive ability and one active ability. So for example, Marcus Kruber's career as a knight gives him the Sigmar's Blessing passive, which periodically converts fatal damage into a bit of health, and an active ability called Valiant Charge that allows him to run forward, slamming into enemies. Bard and Gorixin the Dwarf can choose to be a veteran ranger, a slayer, which a lot of people were looking forward to, or an ironbreaker, and his ironbreaker career lets him taunt enemies so they focus their attacks on him, giving him a few moments of invulnerability due to his Gromeril armor. Carillion the Elf can be a Dark Elf Shade as one of her careers, granting her momentary invisibility and the possibility of phasing through enemies to get out of sticky situations every so often. This is obviously a nod to the End Times, which although Fat Shark has dropped the name from its title, they completely dropped End Times from the title completely, the game is clearly set in the End Times. And in the End Times, as we know, Malekith unites the three elven races, so I wouldn't really take each different career as the character's official canon. It seems much more likely that the real Kirillian is officially and will always be a Waywatcher, but the different careers open up different playstyles and alternate reality warp bubbles where you can experiment with what-if scenarios and kind of roleplay a bit. I'm currently a little bit dubious about these abilities. One of the things I like most about Vermintide 1 is its focus on the melee combat and the fact that it forsakes the MMO, RPG elements and some of those hugely impactful abilities in favor of focusing on character movement and blocking and timing. But these new abilities also help to differentiate each of the characters so they don't all feel the same. And that was kind of an issue in game one, so kind of remains to be seen how they're actually implemented. As long as they take a backseat to the actual flow of combat and skill-based gameplay, 
and that the focus remains on the melee and ranged aspect of fighting rather than the abilities completely overshadowing everything else, I don't really have a problem with it. And it does seem like in the limited amount of gameplay we've seen or been shown so far, you can completely ignore the abilities if you want to. Fat Shark is adding a lot more loot to the game, weapons, consumable quests, trinkets, hats, crafting material, and more, which will all be applicable to your chosen career and the character that you're playing at that time. There is no mention of loot boxes anywhere on the stream, which could be a good or bad thing. I'm not actually sure yet. I don't really know at this point, honestly. I'm sincerely hoping Fat Shark does not go in the loot, bo loot box direction. We've seen that in a lot of games recently, Shadow of Mordor, Battlefront 2, and I think it's been a pretty cancerous addition to gaming in recent years. And the idea of gating cool items behind a paywall or a grind fest is not appealing whatsoever. But I'm not really worried about it yet. With how they handled game one and their pricing structure and everything, and the fantastic they made in game one, I don't really have any reason not to trust them on that front just yet. Heroic deeds are going to be another new mechanic, which sound really fun. They are consumable quests that you can share with your friends which completely changed the game and how it plays. So for example, you might get a quest on a map where your only enemy will be the heavily armored Chaos Warriors, or only mini bosses like Rat Ogres and Chaos Spawn. And it seems like they're really, they've really taken on board a lot of what the Vermintide community over on Reddit has been doing, because there will be these heroic quests where you have to play solo, or only play with one partner instead of a full squad of four, where you have to use the lowest quality weapons in the game on the hardest difficulty. And these kind of quests sound like a huge leg up on what's in game one that they'll add quite a bit of challenge and complexity and could add a massive amount of replayability and really make those loot drops feel worth it, right? Like there's something that you really earned when you complete them. One of the things I'm most excited for is going to be modding, which will be fully supported on launch, as will dedicated servers. We aren't sure exactly what that will entail just yet. I imagine porting in your own models and assets won't be possible, like it's not possible in Total War Warhammer 1 or Total War Warhammer 2, but map creation, gameplay tweaks, spawning, and all those things we've come to expect from the quality of life mods in Fermentide 1 could definitely be on the table from the get-go, and that will be a very, very good thing from the, for the game. So that's really good news on that front. In addition to all of that, talent trees, additional progression systems, and a lot of minimalist playstyle tweaks are also coming but they didn't really go into much detail here. So there's a lot more info to come, obviously, but at the very least, it sounds like Vermintide 2 will have many more systems and enemies to help with the replayability aspect from day one, which is going to be very important for the life cycle of the game in general. Vermintide 2 is currently slated to be released in quarter one of 2018 and is retailing between $27 and $30 on Steam, depending on whether you want to go for that 10% off sale that there's currently running for it. And Vermintide 1 is on sale for $7.50, 75% off. So if you've been thinking about getting it, now is a very good time. I highly recommend it. One of my most played games on Steam. And if you're a Warhammer fan, Left 4 Dead fan, or just want to try out a new first person melee focused game, highly recommended. So I'm going to leave you all with a first Vermintide 2 gameplay. Hope you all enjoy, and let me know what you think. Be sure to check out Fat Shark's official Twitch channel and their Steam page for more information. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Any Pride, signing out for now. think themselves masters of cruelty, but I have a pen who could show them a trick or two.
So now we see him fighting uh, a bunch of Chaos Marauders and also one of the uh, two other Chaos Marauders. So we've seen her using also not even not only the uh, new Elven Spear but also the uh, crossbow that she's got, which is pretty awesome. Um, here you can see a bunch of Skaven moves from this fight, and um, also in the middle, I'm going to spoil a little bit here, but you can see here a bit of that. So it, it lets her, she becomes invisible and the enemies can't see her and she can also run straight through it. So it's a really, really good ability to have in a situation like this where you can keep your over and you can just pop your ability, run through the enemies and attack them. And also the first attack you see on the enemy is, uh, it's a V4 exhaust, but, but it does a whole lot more damage. So it's a really good way of sort of getting out of a really, really crazy situation. It goes out through the enemies and goes just yeah, I mean we're still working a lot with the game, so it's something that we're still tweaking yeah. with the ability to and stuff, so yeah. Through the door! <coughs> Drake is spite! The smoke burns my eyes! open for the manor. The smoke doesn't help. Medical supplies. So I can just chime in here and add also that the, the shade's passive ability is that she does a lot more damage while killing or attacking people. Uh, so you want to get uh, in, uh, you want to get behind your enemies and attack them in the back. So that ties into the whole shade, uh, stealthy, a little bit more assassin uh, role as a, as a shade. The fires burn to draw the dark god's gaze. Best it finds us elsewhere. Be ready! 